All right. Lord. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Things to look Sorry, for in season week two. <laughs> Give me the trivia question, please. All right, way to ignore my comment. Good job by you. What AFC West QB had the most pass attempts of any QB last week? I, You know, it can't be a starter, right? right? I'm thinking Chase Daniel, but I, I was watching that game. I don't think he played a lot. Or let me just throw a dart and say Chad Henney. Oh, negative Ghost Rider. Sorry. Nathan Peterman played the whole game as the only guy for the Raiders. Oh, God. Right. The whole game? The whole game. Yes. Wow. Hey, one thing, I'm, I i don't know. I'm just going to say this before we start the draft. I said this on my podcast yesterday. I We know Mariota was on the trade block in the offseason. He took a pay cut. I got every indication watching that game on film that, like, when we know from hard knocks and everything, Gruden has a love affair with Nathan Peterman to a degree. I, I just wonder if Mariota will be maybe one of those guys on the trade block at the end of training camp. Like, if I'm the Baltimore Ravens, I'm calling the Raiders right now going, we need a backup quarterback because McSorley gets hurt every time he steps on the field, and we'll be out of the Super Bowl hunt if we have to rely on our backup. That w- or some- the Cowboys. Or the Cowboys, exactly. So that, that just jumps out to me. Mariota, of course, fits the Ravens' way they play a little bit more. That's why I said that, but yes. I believe Mariota got a no-trade clause when he agreed to take that dramatic pay cut, but if hey – if, if you're wanted somewhere yeah. and you see a potential path to the field, then you take it. That's right. And Gruden was all in with Peterman in the 2017 yes. draft, I think, the year yes. of Mahomes and I Watson. Know. Gruden was all over. Of course, he was also once all in with Johnny Manziel. So that, that, that should tell you a lot about 19 and 29 in three years with the Raiders. The fact that he was all over Nathan Peterman and Johnny Manziel. All right, you get the first pick. Things to look for in week two of the preseason. Man, I hate to be like this obvious, right? But, uh, but I mean, the, the three rookie QBs, that, that's what I'm No, look- no, no, no. You can't do all three. Okay, you gotta fine. You got to give me one. We, we got to get three rounds of the draft. Come on. <laughs> okay, fine. All right. I'll go to Trey Lance. And that the Trey Lance with their matchup this weekend, I even forget who they're playing here because I got to look they at the play Chargers. The Chargers. That's right. Chargers. Yeah. I got to. I just want to continue to see, like you, we talked about earlier, there is some flash and some wow, and then there's also some what, and you miss that and what, huh? So I want to see if we improve any of that. I want to see if Shanahan continues to put him in positions for all of us to go, wow, to open up the door to go, hey, Trey, you could still start week one. We're going to, you know, get all the clamoring going and all that. I think that's the one that jumps out most to me. 7.30 p.m. Eastern, Sunday night, televised nationally on NFL Network, 49ers at the Chargers. I'm going tonight. The first game, one of the first games yeah. of week two of the preseason, right. the Philadelphia Eagles, the only game tonight, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on NFL Network, Patriots at the Eagles, Cam Newton. Can Cam show us enough to hold off Mac Jones? Mm-hmm. The clock is already ticking. Jones looks like he runs the offense more smoothly, more decisively, more efficiently than Cam. What will we see from Cam that may make us think he can he can stave this off. Because I know week one of the regular season is the focal point, but for the Patriots, week four of the regular season has got to be the key. That's when Tom Brady comes back to town. You want your best quarterback on the field. You want to know who it is by then. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to watch too. You're right. Every sense you get out of there is like, it seemed like, hey, it was going to be Cam, but Mac is doing so good that it seems like even though New England doesn't love rookies playing, that there might be that chance there. Okay, here's another one that I'm kind of interested to see just because of some of the things you read and what you hear at a camp, right? Now, I know you got one catch last week, but I, Jamar Chase, I'm going to be watching him a little bit closely this week. You know, there hasn't been raving reviews about him in training camp to this point. I know we talked about it on a podcast, I think, like a week or two ago. Yeah, he missed football last year. I don't care what you say. You're a wide receiver. You're not in football shape. I don't care who you train with. So, I mean, he's the fifth pick of the draft. They, they passed up Penny Sewell for him. You know, I, I am. I'm going ha- to definitely give that a close look this week to see if Jamar Chase really looks the part and can he be that bona fide number one guy for the Bengals right here in year one. That's part of a great Friday night split screen. NFL Network, 8 o'clock Eastern, Bengals at Washington. Also at that same time, 8 p.m. Eastern, ESPN, at Chiefs at Cardinals. So two games, nationally televised, same time. That doesn't happen very often in the NFL. No. So uh, fun to watch both of those games at once. Next one for me, I'm going Monday night, ESPN, Jaguars at Saints. The Saints quarterback battle. Taysom Hill, Jameis Winston, 
Who looks better? Where will the clues be? Who gets more reps? Will they maybe have Taysom Hill out on the field when Jameis Winston is playing quarterback? Who knows? But that's one that I think is going to go all the way down to the wire, and it could go either way, and we're going to get, I think, plenty of additional information on Monday night, even though we're still a couple of weeks away from knowing who it's going to be week one when they play the Packers. Yeah, that's a good one for sure. I mean, that's that's probably the – most like what what I want to say equal quarterback battle we got in the NFL right now where we're really like not sure where that's going to go so that will be interesting uh let's see my last pick you know I'm going to go to uh I'm going to go to I'm taking Sam Darnold I am I mean hey it's a new team it's a new look he's got some support around him I want to see what Sam Darnold looks like in this offense with some of these guys they got in Carolina that should be pretty cool they got the Ravens Saturday night I just I'm interested to see his look, the offense around him. I think Carolina is one of those teams to kind of watch out for this year. Not saying they're going to make a playoffs, but they got a roster that I look at and I go, I, I think they could be a pain in the butt for a lot of teams in the NFL. Can the Panthers end the 18 game <laughs> preseason winning streak of the Baltimore Ravens? Last one for me, Saturday night, eight o'clock. Vikings hosting the Colts. Yeah. First look at Kirk Cousins. The quarterback position has been muddled, to say the least, in Minnesota because of the COVID issues. How will Kirk run this offense now that Clint Kubiak is in charge? How much will we see from him? And and just that whole, just that, I just think there's got to be some frustration organizationally about Kirk and the vaccine issue. I want to see how he does first time on the field with this potential or actual distraction that's going on as Mike Zimmer makes his thoughts known about getting yeah. everyone vaccinated and, and available each and every week. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.